1 John 3, 14-15 We know that we have passed out of death into life, because we love the brothers. Whoever does not love abides in death. Everyone who hates his brother is a murderer, and you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. Again, this all falls under verse number 11, where John says the message is love one another. So this is our governing idea, love one another. And so we see, uh, we see love pop up here, and then we see the opposite of love uh, as well. And so we know that we have passed out of death into life. And how do we know that? Well, because we love the brothers. So uh, we understand that love is the proof of our relationship of of our relationship of life with Christ. Love is the proof. We know. You understand this. We know. How do we know? Because we love. And so our love is the evidence of the fact that we have actually passed out of death into life. So notice this connection to the word love connects to life. And then the word death uh, is going to connect with hate. And so love is life. Hate is death. Uh, whoever does not abide, whoever does not love abides in death. There, there's that idea there. So, uh, to not love is to live in death, and to love is to live in life. Everyone who hates his brother is a murderer. Again, notice this connection between hate to murder to death. You see that? And so um, that's uh, that's hatred equals death equals murder. Uh, and and again, John John could be referencing back here to Matthew five. Uh, I think it's twenty one and twenty. 22, uh, which is the Sermon on the Mount, where Jesus says, you have heard it said, you shall not murder, but I tell you that if you have hatred in your heart towards your brother, then you've already committed that that murder. Everyone who hates his brother, John says, is, you are a murderer. If you hate, you are a murderer. It's, it's not... It, the the equality of the of the idea of hatred and murder are is so clearly present here, uh, and then John goes on to say that you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. So this is an interesting idea of life eternal, forever life abiding in. Him in a person. We typically think that we will abide in eternal life, but John is saying that eternal life actually abides in people, in us, and that if you have hate, then you're a murderer, and if and there no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. Let's be clear: this does not mean that somebody who commits a physical act of murder cannot repent of that sin and be born again, be forgiven, and be born again. Of course, they can. Uh, of course, we see the idea that a murderer, uh, any any sinner can uh, confess that sin, repent of that sin, turn towards Christ, trust in Jesus, and be forgiven of their sin, and live and have eternal life. But John's making a point that the character of a person, if you're if you're hating, if you if you are currently hating somebody, and then you are currently a murderer. And, and it, that is evidence that, it, that life is not abiding in you because death is abiding in you. And, and again, you, you can't have it both ways and be a child of God and a child of the devil at the same time. You're one or the other. And that's the distinction uh, from, from the beginning of chapter 3 that John has been trying to make, that, that to be a child of God means that you're going to live differently than a child of the devil. And that means that you're going to love each other. Back to verse 11, you're going to love one another and you're not going to hate each other. Uh, And so consider that. How do you love people? Do you hate people, et cetera? Um, Is there is there somebody that you have hatred in your heart against? You you need to deal with that. You need to go to that person, confess that sin, ask forgiveness, et cetera, and and repent of that and and trust in Christ uh, with that particular sin.
Mm-hmm. <laughs>